My name is Will Dable. Um, I'm going to take you through a whiteboarding process for creating an MVP. Um, MVP, or Minimum Viable Product, is a way of narrowing down your idea into the smallest amount of stuff online that validates your assumptions. Uh, it's much better than building a big, crazy, terrifying thing, uh, because if you build too much, you have no idea what makes people love the thing you're building. Uh, Geeks like us love to dive into a code editor or Photoshop and start doing the actual work before we've done the important step of checking what our users want and how we can deliver that. So this works really well for on and offline stuff. It doesn't matter whether you're doing a SaaS or an ebook or selling a physical product. Uh, the important thing is that we cut our idea down with a process, not guesswork, and add features later. It starts with a really simple set of sentences. Assay, I need, so I can. Today we're going to do cat food monthly delivery, uh, which could be put as, uh, as a cat owner, I need some cat food so my cat doesn't starve. You get, this, this user storyline is kind of a cool idea, but we, might, we need to give it a lot of texture. So we need to be like, as a lazy cat owner, uh, I need a monthly food box, you know, a little, a little thing that I can give my cat so that I don't have to leave the house. You can see it's a very different thing from, as a crazy cat lady, I need four tons of food so I can feed all of the cats in my house, or as a new cat owner, I need kitten food to feed my little baby child thing that is actually a cat. So we try and give as much texture as we can uh, to our user storyline before we get into the actual process of figuring out how they get through some kind of UX flow at the other end to actually getting their cat food. I'm going to bang through this whole process that I've already drawn out. Um, of a kind of overcomplicated system for like cat food delivery. The start of any UX flow starts with the decision from the point of view of the user to engage with the brand. So this might be a link from Facebook, it might be like a Google search. Uh, for whatever reason, they make a decision and the first thing that they interact with is usually a like, what the hell is the product and why is it brilliant? You know, so often it'll be like the price and how it works and that's it. It might be that really nice one sentence that explains this does that for this kind of person. As you can see, we've kind of very simply gone through all of the little steps that happen after that, hey, yeah, I'm interested, let's do it kind of, kind of decision making point. So first we've decided we want to know what kind of cat because we want to know the age, the size, the temperament. Uh, this might lead to blog posts about ages and sizes and temperaments of cats. It might lead through to the plan. Do we want like weekly or monthly delivery for fat and skinny cats? Might we want to know about the health of the cat? Are they an indoor and an outdoor cat? Um, do they need organic or vegan cat food? Um, with the shipping, does it need to be like in the city of Melbourne or should it be international? So we're dealing with Canadians and Southeast Asia and Melbourne all under the same brand. Um, is there priority shipping for if you really, really need food for your cat? Can it be delivered by drone? There are, there are many options that we deal with in the shipping chunk. Which then leads us through the accounts where, you know, it's got like login, guest checkouts. You can log in with your GitHub or Facebook for all those geeks with lots of cats finally takes us through to the, you know, the email that you get at the end that confirms it and there's like a coupon code in there for the next time you come in, um, maybe a referral program, some kind of support, finally gets out the other side into reality where you get the food box for your kitty. At which point we might think, well, there's like a, a kitty litter upsell so that we can like double our revenue from the same product. Great idea. Now, this is fantastic for laying out a user flow. Note, note that there's a uh, there's no mention of the word drop down or checkbox or submit button. There's none of that uh, technical jargon because your user does not care about any of those things. We simply want a series of decisions that tie together to an outcome. In this case, it's a bunch of people buying cat food. Now, this is where we put the M in the product. To minimize this, what we do is we get a bunch of post-it notes or a big nasty texter and we scribble out all of the bits that suck. It's really, really hard to do this with your own products because butchering your baby feels like a, a sad and nasty thing to do, but it's really, really important because hidden behind all of these ideas is you know, 10 or 100 extra interfaces that are a massive waste of time. Let's do some uh, post-it notes. Now that we have gone through the UX flow and we've written out all the various components that the user might uh, go through in experiencing the app, now we've got three kinds of sticky note 
that we're going to use to destroy our idea. Sad faces, happy faces, and kind of on-brandness is. Sad faces are for things that users hate. So going through the flow, is there anything here that users are just not going to care about? Particularly lazy cat owners. So the blog, uh, I don't know, who really cares about a blog? That doesn't help me get food for my cat. The account step. This is really obviously to me something that doesn't make anybody happy. You know, maybe GitHub and Facebook logins are going to be useful, but it doesn't get me any nearer to my goal as a user of getting cat food. Happy faces. Some people really like certain chunks of applications. So it might be that there's a certain bit in this that makes a lot of sense, there's a lot of fun, such, such, such as the idea of like the health component. You know, that there is a brand that's going to take care of my cat uh, on its health terms might make me really happy. So let's look at that as a component. Then we've got the idea of brand. Now, brand's a weird one, right? Because with branding online, and with application branding, your brand is not what you tell people it is. It's not the logo or the colors or any of that stuff. Your brand is what your users tell other people it is. And in this case, we've said it's monthly cat food. So let's say that the plan idea of when you get the food is a big part of the brand. You know, it might be monthlycatfood.com. With these three ideas, we can go through all of the components in the app and find out where the really important stuff is. Okay, so I've made some like uh, really subjective calls on what I think is cool and not cool about the app. Um, the fact that it exists is fun. Um, who cares about what kind of cat it is? It's like my cat and that's all I, all I care about. The blog might be great, might be bad. That makes me want to forget about it entirely because all decisions in good UX should be every user will or uh, only users that want a certain thing will buy our product. We don't want, sometimes people might. Those kinds of questions are really, really scary in UX. So the blog being maybe a good or a bad thing makes me want to kill it entirely. Um, the idea that it's a, a plan that comes every month, that's on brand. Um, the fact that we care about health is great. Shipping and accounts, of course, nobody cares about that kind of stuff. Um, a nice email makes everybody happy. And the fact that it's a box of food is on brand. So based upon this, we can kill off all the sad stuff, find smarter ways of doing the good stuff, and, and change the flow into a much simpler version of the same. Cool. So I've just rubbed out all of the fat in the idea. Only the things that are necessary for it to exist remain. You make a decision, you find out the price, there is only one plan, which is monthly, and it's only vegan cat food. You get one email to confirm that you get the product, and then you get your food box, and that's it. So whereas previously this big, long, complicated mess of stuff we had might be 30 or 40 or 50 interfaces that are with APIs to the GitHub login and all this other ridiculous stuff that nobody needs, we've done something that could probably be executed in a one-page site. Um, even the questions about purchasing, etc., could all be done very simply through email. Um, I've actually seen people uh, test payment ideas by just saying that there will be a payment and asking for an email address. You might not be validating that you can write a payment system, but you don't need to if nobody's going to buy anything. Let's put this into a wireframe. Okay, cool. So we've taken our flow that we created that has no more fat on it, and we've actually figured out that we can turn this into a really simple one-page site. It's monthly vegan cat food for $30 a month. Instead of worrying about shipping, we've just said it's in Melbourne. Bad luck. And that way, if people are not in that area, they don't buy it, and that's fine. Yeah, we're not creating all this extra work around shipping systems and even the physical uh, distribution problems that we've got to deal with. It's just 30 bucks in Melbourne. We explain briefly why, uh, because there's some health stuff going on with the brand, and then there's a big buy button. And instead of building some kind of crazy shopping cart system, it's one thing that starts now and works monthly, and we do all of the buy, buy mechanisms through some other third-party provider. This can be whipped up in like two or three hours, can be put online, and can be measured. So we can see how many people look at the site, how many people actually go through to buying. If you were really, really sneaky with this and you were doing a minimum viable business, not a minimum viable product, 
You'd throw a couple of grand worth of Google AdWords budget at this, targeting keywords that you think are important, and then refund everybody else's money after you've done the actual uh, initial spend. Um, because then you can say, apologies, our distribution did not come through, but at least we've learnt what people out there want from our web app. So to sum up, what we've done, we've defined an audience member from their point of view with a bit of granularity. We've taken them through a process within our application that gets them something. Doesn't matter whether it's an ebook or a subscription or a product, physical or electronic. We've taken them through that, got them out the other end, and then cut all the fat off that process. Um, if the idea that we come up with at the end isn't very exciting, it might be that our idea wasn't very exciting in the first place. Um, even more importantly, it checks our assumptions against those of an audience. And that is the true power of doing a good MVP.